Previously, I showed you how to use cameras to detect people. You can definitely use this method when somebody is approaching your door. Too bad I can't use this because I live in a high traffic area, so I would get a lot of positive but useless because I'm not interested in people walking by my house. Next up, I show you how to use this presence sensor. It is so smart it knows when somebody is approaching, but sadly, for whatever reason, it does not work properly in the rain. So with every raindrop, it thinks somebody is approaching, and that's not good. Next up, I show you how to use this LED light with built-in radar. It works really well, so well that it even detects swirls, cats running nearby. So that's not really useful as well. So today, I'll show you how to install trip wires. Yep, pretty cool. It looks something like this, but obviously we don't want the laser beam to be visible. We want it to be invisible so nobody knows that it's there in the first place. Shockingly, these devices are pretty reasonable at about $50. Here's the one that we'll be using today. Basically, it shoots a beam and the beam reflects the reflector and bounces back. So if it doesn't detect the beam coming back, then it knows somebody is walking past it. Or if something is covering this reflector or the reflector is damaged for whatever reason, then it'll think somebody is in the way. If this sensor can see the beam bouncing back, then it will be lit yellow. If it doesn't see the beam coming back, then it will be lit red. So we can certainly set up an automation to detect when it's red. Or if a piece of leaf flew on this reflector and covered the reflector completely, then obviously it will turn red for a very long time and we can certainly set up an automation to alert us that something is covering the reflector. This whole setup is completely outdoor. The beam is good for up to 35 foot as you can see in the spec. In my scenario, I'm only using it for 15 feet and that works just as well. You have several ways to mount the detector, and this is what they look like once you install them, as seen in the manual. Just for fun, here's a dollar bill for you to see how small everything is. Yeah, it's pretty small. Very impressive. Here's another angle of the sensor installed with the brackets and the reflector as well. The sensor itself has five wires. You only really need four of them. Brown and blue is for power. Interestingly enough, this can be powered over AC or DC. And if you're using it with DC, 12 volt power supply like myself, it doesn't matter the polarity. This thing is so smart. It's amazing. For our purposes, we'll be using the white wire and the black. White is ground, black is NO, normally open. What does that mean? It means there's no data going through when it's in operation. If the beam does not reflect back to the sensor, then it's going to be closed. So we can monitor this black wire for open and close. Honestly, if you want to do it quick and easy, then use the Aquara water leak sensor. Myself, I really don't like this water leak sensor to detect water leak just because it doesn't have a speaker, so you cannot hear anything coming out of it. If there's a water leak and your hub is down, then you won't even know if there's a water leak. That's awful. It's cheap and it's perfect for our purposes. So here you can see I wired two wires to this water leak sensor. Again, we're using the white wire and the black wire. When somebody walks through and it breaks the beam, then the sensor will send data. This data will send directly to the water leak with these two pins right here, and then it will send an alert to your home assistant to send you a notification. Unfortunately, when you're walking really fast past the sensor, the sensor will obviously detect the break, but the Aquara refuses to acknowledge the signal. I'm guessing that the signal is so fast that the Aquara will just ignore it. So obviously, if you're standing in front of the sensor for a very long time, then the Aquara will acknowledge that the beam has been broken. If you need a refresher course on how to get this Aquara World Leak Sensor into your Home Assistant, please refer to this video. Now, by default in Home Assistant, this Aquara sensor will appear as a moisture sensor. If there's no data, then it will appear as dry. If somebody walks in front of the beam, then it will appear as wet. You can click on it, go into the settings, and change it as something else. So here you can change it as window or occupancy, and then click on update. While we're here, might as well change the icon to something else instead of water. We can change this to account, and then click on update. You should know that this Aquara sensor is not waterproof, or at least I don't think it will be outdoor proof, so it's best to install this inside your house somewhere. The gray cable that was provided is about 6 feet long. If you need it to be longer, then most likely you'll need a junction box and then run an extremely long wire into your house. And of course, this Aquara sensor will be in your house as well. Now, if you want something even better than the Aquara sensor, then you have to use this ESP chip. Myself, we're using a D1 Mini. I know this whole layout looks confusing, intimidating, but it's okay. We're going to walk through it right now. You'll need a 12 volt DC power supply. This 12 volt DC power supply will power up this buck converter and also power up the trip wire itself. 
Remember to use brown and blue to connect to this buck converter on this end right here. On the buck converter, you can use a screwdriver, a super tiny screwdriver to adjust the output voltage. We need to get 5 volt output. You'll definitely need a multimeter to verify the output voltage right here. So using a screwdriver, you can adjust the voltage output, spin it counterclockwise to get high voltage, spin it clockwise to lower the output voltage. We need 5 volt output to power up this D1 mini chip. Lastly, we'll need the NO normally open, which is the black wire from the trip wire going into the D2 pin. The white wire will be going into the ground of the output on this side. The code for ESP Home is relatively simple. The highlighted part is the standard. Here's a video for you if you need a refresh course on what it is. The bottom part is all we need to get the sensor working. Once you get the whole thing integrated into Home Assistant, then this is what you'll see in ESP Home integration. Right now, the whole thing is not connected, so that's why you're seeing unavailable. But when I was testing it, here you can see when it was open and closed, open and closed. Open is when nobody is walking through it. Close is when somebody is walking through it. Now this strip wire is crazy sensitive, so it doesn't matter if you're running right through the beam or not. It will definitely detect and send the signal to the chip, and the chip will alert home system easily. Alright, hopefully this video helps you understand how trip wire works and how to make it smart. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.